Little wins, right? Yeah. I did it, and there's Tom. Secret play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. It is a Hobby King Mini OSD right there. I don't know if you can see it. Now, what this does, basically, it just gives you your uh, position, GPS position, uh, battery voltages, flight time, RSSI, that sort of thing. But it does not connect to a flight controller and give you like artificial horizon, wind speed, and all that kind of fancy stuff. This is just a a small OSD, just so you can throw it on a little plane and fly it around. Does come with the GPS module. So it just gives you GPS stuff, including a home arrow, so you can find your way back. Very simple. Cost me about, uh, I think it was $25, something like that. So we're going to take a look at it and see what we can do with it. So I have the Hobby King Mini OSE wired up on the bench here. And just one important thing, guys, make sure you know that the ground is on the top next to the labels for the pins. If you look right there, you would think that the signal wires would be here next to these labels. But in fact, they're not. They're underneath the top row of pins. The ground is at the top. And I couldn't find this in the directions. It was kind of unclear with a little diagram that came in the directions. Even over here, it was hard to tell. So, just a word of caution. Ground is at the top. You can see here that I have a fix. Here's the regular time up here. Anyway, what I wanted to say was there's no home arrow that I can see anywhere. And I've heard you need a software upgrade to get the home arrow to show up. So, we'll probably do that next. So, the three links you're going to need for this project are the Hobby King link right here. And I'll put these under the video. This is the link to the product page. And on that product page, you have some tabs. Go to the Files tab. And under there, there's a file called Mini OSD Reflash Direction. So you need that. And that is just a Word document. So the Word document uh, looks like this and just has the, uh, the directions and some good pictures. And you can use that as a reference. Also, there's an RC Groups thread where you can get uh, the firmware from Dr. Tom. That's right here. He has the different firmwares that are pre-compiled flashes, so you don't have to compile it yourself. And then there's also, in the same RC Groups thread, a uh, picture of the board. I think it's on the first page of that thread right there that gives you the pinout. So that's the main things you need other than you need the burner, which is called Extreme Burner. And you can just type that in. I'll put a link to this too, maybe, but it may change, you know, over time. So just go to Extreme Burner Free Download and just find it there. And uh, the one I used was just down here. This one right here that has 674-689. Just go there to download the software. Now, if you want to compile the uh, hex code yourself for the Flash, you can just uh, do a search for CL-OSD firmware. And you can usually find the wiki by just clicking there. And there's, there's the wiki, and here's the project home. Basically, all the uh, code is under here, you just go down to the uh, section you need, like source. And you can find out about the code here. And there's also information about it under programming, or compile program, rather, under the wiki, right here. I took it out of its heat shrink thing and removed the label that was held on by this sticky tape. And lo and behold, there are labels on the board underneath to the right pins. You just can't see them normally because they're covered up by the regular label. But more importantly, here are the six pins I need to program the processor so I can get the home arrow. So I've just soldered some servo lead wires onto the uh, programming pads here. And I'm just going to take the ends of these and poke them on to the uh, AVR programmer right here. This is one of those uh, USB ASP programmers. Well, it turned out the programmer had nice labels on it like MOSI and RST and such so I could see which pins were which on it. But the uh, OSD did not have any labels, so I had to use this little diagram I got off the internet to find the uh, pinout. And there they are. So all I had to do was match these names from these pins to the names on the programmer. Turned out some of the wires were right next to each other in a row, so I put the plug back on the end of the wires on these three, and then I put a two-pin plug cover on these two that were right next to each other, and then there was one left 
that was by itself and I didn't cover that because it's not touching anything. So let's go ahead and plug the USB burner into the USB port. Picture here. And you can see that this is lit up. Our OSD is lit up so it's getting power. Everything looks good so far. Now let's go burn it. I'm going to download Extreme Burner just doing a Google search. That's the program I need to flash. Looks like, this one looks like a good link here. I'm going to try that. And we'll see how it works. And we'll come down here and there is a download button. So I'm going to do that. Uh, show folder. And there it is right there. Okay, let's run the setup file. Run it. And it tells me to insert my programmer. So I'm going to put that USB programmer in the USB port. And now I'm going to install. I'm just going to take the defaults, create a desktop icon, install, there we go. Okay, yes. I'm going to say install it anyway. It says it takes a few seconds to install the USB driver. So it finally came up with the uh, finish window right here, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish out. It says, uh, do you want to restart your computer? I'm going to say, no, I will restart my computer later. Let's just do that. Okay, so we got Extreme Burner on there. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, I found it. It's I just moved it right over here. Let's run it and see what happens. It's coming up. Okay, it looks good. We've got it installed. Now, I found Extreme Burner just wouldn't work in uh, Windows 8 64-bit. So if you got Windows 8 64-bit, or probably any 64-bit operating system, it's not going to work right. Uh, so I had to go to... Windows 7 32-bit, and that's what I'm using right now. Uh, okay, so these are the files that I found for the firmware that work the best. I tried some of the different ones that were pre-compiled, and none of them work. But these pre-compiled files seem to work very well. They're from uh, Dr. Tom. So what I did is downloaded one of these. Uh, I kind of like NTSE Imperial, two batteries, two hertz with the speed fix. That one seems to work pretty good. So all you got to do is just right-click and then save the link as and you can put it wherever you want I'm just putting it on the desktop so I'm gonna go ahead and save that and then we'll get the two files out and burn them okay plugging the USB programmer into the USB board on the computer so right here plugging it in and you can see the lights flashing on our OSD and there's a green light on the programmer Okay, let's go ahead and program it. Okay, going to go ahead and run Extreme Burner. Bring that up, and we got our two files, our hex file and our EP file. So let's first bring this up top here. Okay, let's open up the flash file, which is the hex file. So we got hex selected right here. And here is our two battery hex file from Dr. Tom. Going to open that. And that basically just fills in this data. Next, we're going to do the EEPROM tab, which is this one. So let's go to File and open the EEPROM file. And we're going to select EPP for EEPROMs. And select the Dr. Tom 2 battery EEPROM file. And open that. It says that it loaded successfully, and you can see the data change right here. Okay, now we can go ahead and make sure we have the right chip selected. That's the ATmega88. And then we'll go ahead and write it. To say write all. Now it's going to say incorrect chip found, but just continue on that. And that's it, it's done. We can now unplug the USB programmer. So I'm going to unplug it. There we go, and we're done. You can just go ahead and close this. So that's about as simple as it can get right there. We didn't have to compile anything. We used the pre-compiled uh, firmware files. So we're testing it out after the firmware upgrade. And uh, I've got two batteries hooked on here, one to run the OSD and one just to measure. And both of those battery voltages are up here on the screen, right here. That's a two cell battery and that's a three cell battery. And I've checked them with my battery meter here. You can see this one's reading about 211 and I adjusted these potentiometers, these two potentiometers. So I got about 1210 versus 1211, so not bad. And this one's close too. 
So I have seven satellites here now, and you can see the GPS coordinates right here are now shown up. And this is the home arrow over here. But I found out the home arrow doesn't show up until you set the home position and you're moving pretty good. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and long press the button, and you will see the other information come up. In the uh, All right, going to long press the button. There you go. Now you see that uh, the GPS coordinates went away and the trip information came up. And that's what this software apparently does as far as I know, but now I don't have any speed yet. See, the speed down here is zero. So I think if I get some speed, the home error will show up and maybe some other things will happen. But there it is for now. So that's it. The firmware is on there. Looks like it's working. You can refer to the information that I, I gave under the video in the description in the links. Thank you for watching. Take care, bye.